All right. Let me see here. Get Erin where I want her over here. Hello and welcome to Horse Center Monday night live show. I'm Julie Ramji, aside my co-hosts at Swiss Army Sean and the lovely Pennsylvania-based trainer, Erin McClellan. Welcome. Hi. So, Erin, we are so excited to have you here tonight, especially me being a bomb female in the industry. I'm just so excited to pick your brain. So why don't we start off with um, you telling us a little bit about how you got started in the industry? Um, okay, well, I got started kind of in maybe a different way. Um, I always had show horses when I was younger. And so my first job actually was for a veterinarian. Um, he was a racetrack vet, but he actually was our vet with our show horses when I was a kid. And so when I was in high school, I started working for him and he was a racetrack vet. And so I started working for him and going to him to the racetrack. And so that was my introduction to the racetrack. And so I started working for him and went to Penn National every day with him. And so I started seeing that I could actually make some money at the racetrack and started galloping horses. Then um, after I was working for him, I started to work, you know, galloping race race horses and started grooming horses for people and so that was kind of my introduction to the racetrack and did that through college and you know I ironically I guess I sort of got stuck there but it kind of became a home for me and kind of became um lifetime work for me and I became happy there and it became what I wanted to do I guess very nice so you you said you started with show horses so what was the moment where it you knew it had shifted, like you were in the track and you just weren't going to leave. Um, uh, so that I guess for me, that's kind of interesting. So I didn't think I wanted to train horses. Um, I was really interested in doing layup horses and recovery actually was kind of what I was focused on when I was younger. Um, but but I had a son. And so um, kind of what I learned with my circumstances in life was that I couldn't really earn a living. I didn't have a farm. And so I decided that I was going to get my trainer's license and sort of needed to make my own hours and I needed to do it a little differently. So um, I did it. I did it a little differently than most people. Um, you know, as you know, most people start really early in the morning with racehorses. And I do that now. I do start, you know, early in the morning now. Uh, uh, but then when I got my trainer's license in 2010, my son was younger. Um, you know, I came in a little bit later. I got him on the bus in the morning and started a little later. I only had about five horses and there was some, some owners willing to give me a chance. And so I started a little bit later and galloped my own horses then and grooved my own horses and walked my own horses. I sort of did everything myself at that time. And that's what kind of got me training horses was the ability to do everything myself and be able to train and also be a mom. Um, wow. And that's kind of what started me training, to be honest, uh, it was really layup horses that interested me. And then I started training horses out of, I guess you could say need. Um, but I sort of felt, I sort of fell in love with it. Um, and, and so I, I kept going. Um, people gave me opportunities and I fell in love with it. And so I, I sort of kept going with it as he got older and, um, I met my husband and, and, um, we started doing it together and, and we kept moving forward and we, you know, we have a successful operation today. Wow. What an inspiration just being a mom and working and I have three littles of my own. So you are a true inspiration to hear that, to hear that you were out there, you know, creating your own, your own life for you all. So good for you. Um, favorite track you've ever been to. Let's make it a light one. Uh oh, did we lose her? Possibly. She doesn't have the best connection. No, I'll text her and see if we can. Oh, there she is. Is she coming back to us? 
maybe. There she is. Can you hear us, Erin? We, we got gotcha? you. There. I couldn't hear your last question, though. So try one more time. Okay. Let's make it a little light here. And um, your favorite racetrack of all time that you've been to. Oh, my favorite racetrack of all time. Um, boy, I hate, I hate saying this because I'm based at Penn National, but I really <laughs> love Maryland racing. Um, yeah. Uh, Maryland really welcomes you and they really make you feel like they want you there, I guess. Um, so I, I, I hate saying that, um, cause I'm based at Penn national, but, um, Laurel Pimlico, you know, the Maryland tracks really make you feel like they want you to be a part of what they do there. Um, so I, so I have to say the Maryland tracks. Okay. Well, that's as much great. as I hate saying <laughs> being welcomed is a, is, yeah and then being welcoming and making you feel like they want you there i feel like that's that's huge you know more more tracks should should yeah. be that way okay um let's see favorite horse and i would say that you trained but since you rode your own too favorite horse that you've either trained or just had to exercise in your life um Okay, now again, this is a really hard answer. Um, so, you know, everybody always gets so excited about those two year olds that are just, you know, they can they can win those early stakes, and I've I've had those those two year olds that are you know that that can win those early. You know, for me, it's been PA breads. You know, I've had Ujai, Pak Pak Pak, um, that have been really great horses for me and have gotten me some press. Um, and I, I've loved those horses and they've been really exciting for me and they've gotten me, um, you know, accolades and, and things that I've really loved and I, I love them. And as much as I love them, I've really loved those open nickel horses <laughs> and, and those, those horses that have made it down to those, you know, beaten four claimers and and you know i know people may knock me for saying that but you know um eight miss behaven who's now my pony horse you know i mean you know there's a horse who made 93 starts in his life and won 21 races and you know at the end of his career he was running for four thousand like that you know that you know there he was running for four thousand trying to knock out a you know a a beaten 4,000 race, but you know, how do you knock that horse? He's run all over the country and he's, you know, he's won 21 races. You know, you can't take any thing away from that horse. Um, I love horses like that, him and, and horses like him. You can't take anything away from them. It's, it, it, it's really hard to be that war horse. Uh, you know, there's, there's not a, a lot like him. Um, you know, Sinifius has a horse like him right now that that's running, you know, that, it, you know, it's just, you know, get the, those nine and 10 year olds that are running like that. That's, that's, um, there's something to be said for that. Um, we have one like that tomorrow night, spin cycle, you know, there's just, just, I love those horses and I, I know they're never going to win a stake for me. I understand that. Um, but they're great great horses and I have a, a ton of respect for them and I hope for them to all retire well and have second careers if that makes sense um so it's really hard for me to pick a favorite horse because you know you get those young horses um new new hire was running this year and she's um spectacular and I hope she comes back next year she's taking some time off right now I hope she comes back next year and is a really, really lovely four-year-old. I think she will be. Um, I really love her. Um, but it's hard to pick a favorite horse because horses are um, really um, wonderful in different ways, if that makes any sense. Um, and so I respect them for different things. So... Um, it's, it's so hard to pick a favorite. 
I don't, I don't they're know. Like, they're like your children, too, That's right? That's my answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer, I guess, you know? <laughs> well, we have Ellie Hess here, or Eli Hess, excuse me, love a war horse, too. And then we have a question. Did I say bet? Is there a trainer that helped you in the beginning? Um, yes, there's a, there's a lot of trainers that helped me in the beginning. Um, I worked for a lot of people. They were all Penn national based people. Um, you know, when I started, I worked for a veterinarian, Kevin Brophy. That was the, my first job on the racetrack. I worked for Harry Thompson. Um, I worked for Mike Rogers. I worked for Bruce Kravitz. I worked for Murray Rojas. Um, I worked for so many different people, really. Um, I galloped horses, I groomed horses. Um, and I, I took a little bit from everybody and I kind of tried to take the things I liked, maybe the things I didn't like. And I tried to make my own. I learned a tremendous, a lot, honestly, from my husband, John Connor. I learned a, a lot from him, quite frankly. Um, so I tried to take a lot from those people and tried to make my own, my own way. Um, boy, it's, it's just so hard to say what, like my, my favorite thing <laughs> from any one person, um, rider wise. Um, it's just, it's just so hard to say who I might have learned from. I just took so many things from so many different people and I tried to come up with um, what to me was, you know, what I thought was the right thing. I tried to, you know, incorporate what I incorporate what I thought was, um, you know, what is the best thing? What is ethics and um, the best way to train a horse. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that goes into training. Um, I think you train older horses different than you train younger horses. And, you know, it's maybe not politically correct as it is to say you train good horses differently than you train um, horses that are average. Um, so, you know, we try to take all those different things into account and, you know, my husband goes a lot into what we do. Um, he's, he's a big factor into our, you know, into our operation and, you know, our help is too. we have, we have really, really good grooms. Um, and, and they're a big, they're a big part of, of what we do. It's, it's, you know, it's not just me. We're all kind of a part of 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 what we do I, I don't know i don't know if it's a good answer or not but it's it's kind of, of you know how is. we do things is it, it really is a it, it really is a team thing it's not just a one person thing it's a team thing all right we have another question from eli is there a way the industry can better help horses find a career after racing and what a good question because you mentioned about them having careers you like you know to try to give them the best shot to have a career after racing i personally started recently following you on instagram and i know what i've seen is that you help personally some of them have careers after right you you keep some of your own or um what do you do to ensure that they get the right spot after racing? Um, so this is, this is a really, really important thing to me. And I, I don't think it's just important to me. I think this is that, I think that this is important to a lot of people. Um, I think them having a second, I'm trying to stand where this light isn't affecting <laughs> the picture. <laughs> um, I think the second career is, very important to a lot of people, not just me. Um, I think that knowing when to stop is key in that, um, so that, that we can ensure that these horses have the ability and the soundness level, um, to be able to do something else when they're done. And, you know, also, you know, kind of just having a feel for what, what their mental 
capacity is and also their soundness level is. Um, this this is so important. Um, you know, it these horses are so athletic and they're so versatile. They can do so many things. If you think about what we put them through as racehorses from, you know, the time they're so young, from two-year-olds, we're asking them, or e even younger than that, even weanlings, you know, we're asking them to go through sales or, you know, I, as yearlings, we're asking them to go through sales rings or yearlings or weanlings, we're asking them to go through sales rings. Um, I'm fortunate enough to to train for some breeders and stuff, so... I'm able to have the history of some of the horses that I have from early on, um, you know, but they handle so much from, from paddocks to, to the racing, to being handled by ponies, to starting gates, to, you know, so many things. Um, they, they're so versatile. They're so athletic. They're so able to do so many things. So if, if there are some things coming in, into question like as far as soundness if we just stop them in time they have the ability to have second careers where they can do such phenomenal things and on the other side of it is people doing vettings and those things because you know a lot of these horses are getting ppes done um when they're retired from racing with second careers you know we need people that are looking at them with second careers to have an open mind. You know, I've retired horses that have been <clears throat> turned down because of, you know, let's just say they have oslets or something like that. And they say, Oh no, you know, they don't have the ability to have a second career. And now, you know, someone turned them down because of oslets. And actually now four years later, they're showing it Devin jumping fences five, six, and they actually have a really wonderful second career. And they actually have a value of quite a lot of money in their second career. Um, so, you know, it, there's two sides to that. We need people to have an open mind when they're evaluating them off the racetrack. And we also need people to retire them before I, I hate to say it, but like before it's too late, I guess, yeah. before them to be able to have a second career. Um, so there's kind of two sides to that. There's so many things they can do. They can, you know, they can barrel race, they can fox hunt, they can event, they can, I mean, they're just so athletic. They're so versatile in their abilities. Like they are the most versatile breed I think there is out there um, as a sport horse. That's my personal opinion. I totally agree. Totally, totally agree. And as far as you mentioning about people vetting, getting them off the track, um, I have a layup farm here in West Virginia outside of Charlestown. And um, I just don't believe in, you know, if, if most of them, if you take their problems off the track and you're giving them a new life, they don't matter. I'm not going to say all of them, but most of them, like you said, right. if they're stopped in time, what you would stop for racing isn't going to affect them to be, you know, a pleasure horse or maybe do some hunter flats or something on, you know, in the show ring. So I love that. And I love that you're so passionate about that. We have another question. What are your thoughts about Haiza from, did I say bet? Um, okay. So Haiza is, um, it's a double-edged sword. There's some things about Haiza that are positive. Everybody probably wants to kill me right now for saying that. <laughs> And there's a lot about it that's negative. Um, so there's some things about HISA that are positive. And the things about it are positive that, you know, if we could have a, a neutral system, like, for instance, you know, if we could have a system where everything in there um, that we plug in, that we could all see, for instance, our vaccination records and stuff, it, you know, if that would all be a system that we could all see, uh, that is universal. Like that's a, that actually is a positive thing. Um, unfortunately I have looked up my horses and gone in to, um, put in my vet records and I have records already in there and they are in inaccurate. 
there's records in there for my horses and they're not right and I can't fix them. So that's a flaw in that system and I, I can't quite figure out how to fix it. So that's not good. Um, I'm not quite sure how to navigate some of the withdrawals that are coming up that are going to start in, a, you know, um, January 1st. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to navigate some of that. And so we're going to, I'm sure me, myself, as long, along with everybody else is going to rely heavily on our veterinarians, um, to navigate some of the withdrawals. I, I don't know that all that's bad. Um, as racing has moved forward, I think there's a lot of things that are positive, you know, as we've moved away from things like equipoise and the use of steroids. I think all those things are positive things. I'm glad we don't use those things anymore. Um, I think all those things are positive and I think they move our industry in a, in a really good direction because we don't want our, we don't want our industry to be a bad industry. We don't right. want those things in our industry. Um, but we also want, you know, a governing body to understand that there's some things that we do need and, you know, they have, they do need to understand that we do have athletes and athletes need things. And so that's the part that is concerning, um, you know, that they are athletes and they do need things. And that is the concern that, um, there may be some things that horses need that, um, under HISA, they might, they might not be able to get. Um, and so that is a little bit of a concern and I'm not sure how that's all going to go moving forward. And I think we're all going to just have to navigate that collectively and we're not sure how that's going to go. And we're just going to have to keep sort of moving forward, seeing how that's going to go together. Um, I do think our board members that we have together that are on that, like Rob McQuet, I think those people are good. Um, and I think they'll be influential and I think they're good for us. And I think they'll advocate for horsemen. I think they're good for horses. Um, and so I think those people in place are good. Nice. So very, very nice answer there. Um, we have Tyler Shanley who pops in, says you're a very well-respected trainer. We have Terry Hay, love her passion about the horses and the, in the industry. And let's see, we have grandma horse racing. Do you ride your horses like in workouts? Okay, so I do not ride my horses myself anymore. I, I ride my pony um, and I usually retire a pony. Like It seems like weirdly, I end up retiring a horse every couple of years that I keep for a couple of years um, and then end up moving on to, to a good home. Now this one that I, I've kept this time um, which is ain't misbehaving. I think this one I'm probably going to keep forever. Um, the last time, the last horse I kept, which was Spites Town Time, I have him. He's in the family. Um, so he's with my stepson's aunt. So I know where he is and I know he is well. So he will probably stay within the family too. Um, oh, I love that. So... Um, <laughs> So I kind of retire a horse and kind of make them a pony and I sort of keep them until they move on. But eight misbehavement, I think is going to probably stay mine probably forever. Um, but um, I, now I kind of forget what the original question was. It was, do you ride your own, own uh, horses? Oh, the race do horse. I, do I, don't, I don't, I don't anymore. <laughs> I used to, and I don't. And it, to be honest, there, there's two answers to that question. One is my weight. I'm too heavy now. And two, um, I'm not as brave as I used to be. And so I think when fear starts to become a component, um, you end up just not as good of a rider as you used to be. And fear is kind of a factor for me now. And so I think it's better for me to have just my exercise riders do it and not me. So I stay on my pony. And I'm very happy in that role, <laughs> um, but I, I don't think I should be doing workouts anymore. So, well, well, Aaron, through, 
What's that, Julie? I said it was well deserved for her to enjoy her <laughs> pony. You know, uh, absolutely. Let them do the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> So Aaron, through the first 25 minutes of this, we see your love for the horses. So one thing that always is curious to me and feels like would be the toughest part for me is what about the claiming game when you have a horse so long and then you end up losing it? How hard is that? Okay, so that's a really double-edged sword. It's hard on both sides of it. So um, it's hard when you lose them. It's equally hard when you claim a horse from someone and someone's crying and you're like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I just played the worst that you love so much. So, like, that's a double-edged sword. Um, it is really hard when you you lose a horse that you love a lot. It's also hard when you claim a horse from someone that they loved a lot, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Because <laughs> um, I'm on both sides of that spectrum and i always say to myself like one day i'm gonna write a book about this like about the changing of hands um and sometimes it doesn't even matter to the trainer it matters to the groom because at the end of the day sometimes it's the groom that it matters to because they're the ones that spend the hours and hours of time with that horse sometimes it's not really the trainer or even the owner it's the group yep. whose yeah. hands have gone over that horse every day for hours and hours. Um, so that claiming is a really, really hard thing. I always feel guilty when I drop a slip. I always feel guilty when I lose a slip or when I lose a horse. Um, claiming is a really, really hard thing. And it is a necessary thing in our business. It is what makes horses able to run in, in equal company, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's what allows them to run with horses of their kind. And so we need claiming. It's what makes it work. Um, but it is hard. Um, and I, I, would be, I would be lying if I didn't say I didn't lay in my bed at night and cry when I've lost a horse I love. And I would be lying if I didn't lay in my bed and cry at night when I've claimed the horse that I knew someone else loved. So claiming is hard. It is hard on both sides. Now you've mentioned your, hus your husband, John Connor, a few times here too. Tell us how that came about. Um, so John is, uh, <laughs> John is John. <laughs> so I met, I met, John and racing. And of course, Tyler Connor, who rides all our horses, which I'm sure everyone noticed is his son. Um, and they are both lovers of animals and lovers of the game and um, very much a part of what we do. And I love them both very, very much for their passion for the animal. Um, and that is so much a part of what we do. And so, you know, I always know with Tyler riding that he is always going to take care of the horse. And that's what I love about Tyler. You know, he is always going to take care of the horse. I always know that. You know, owners sometimes get upset if he doesn't ride to the wire, you know, and those things. But what I always know about Tyler is he's always going to take care of the horse. And for me, with our horses, that is what matters. That is first. Always first is the horse. And with John, it's the same thing. You know, he loves, he has so much compassion for the horse. You know, and that, that's what I love about him. He has a tremendous love for the game. He loves this game, and he's taught me a lot about the game. He's taught me a lot about the condition book. He's taught me a lot about a lot of the game, but he's, you know, but his first love is the horse. Um, and so that, that's gone a long way for me. And, you know, when we sort of combined our businesses um, around 2016, 17, I guess, um, which is sort of what kind of put me because we put everything into my name, so to speak, that's kind of what made, 
me stand out because when we sort of put everything together we put it in my name because he said i'm prettier so to speak so (laughs) (laughs) that would work better because he's a guy (laughs) so uh you know that's what kind of made it work um you know he said that's going to work better if we put everything in your name because you're a woman and he was right um you know what i what i love so much about john was his compassion for the horse and that that's what made me love him was horse first and you know sometimes it does make you not win as much it does make you fall behind sometimes but that's okay because at the end of the day what matters is horse first and we do win races and we are successful And we do well together and we work well together and we work well as a family, but the horse is always first. Um, And that's what's important to us, you know? Yeah. No one can argue you're taking care of the horses first. You're winning at 19% and you're you're in the money 49% of the time. So I think any trainer would take that and any fan would take that as, I mean, you're looking out for the horse and you're putting up the numbers. The, the condition book is important and you know he's taught me a, a lot um so there's you know there's a it's a really you know there's a lot of relationships that pay behind the scenes um you know myself our help um which are fantastic we have a lot of old school grooms which are hard to come by and we're very very fortunate to have them and tyler and Tyler's agent, uh, and, and they've taught me a lot and we work really, really well together and we kind of make it all work. And that's, um, it just works. What we do works and, and we all do our part and everybody doing their part is what makes it work, you know? So I have two questions that I ask everybody that's in your situation. One, how hard is it to leave the track at the track and not bring it home? And then the second, you kind of touched about being a female, being a female in the business. Um, so I don't know if we ever leave the track at the track. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love to learn. It's, it's, so training courses is a, is a lifestyle. It's not a job. It's a lifestyle. And that's okay. Cause it's our love and it's our passion. So I don't know if we ever leave it at the track and that's okay. Cause it, it's our love and that's fine. Um, as far as being a female, it's a, I'm a weird female. Cause I don't look at it that way. Um, I really do look at it as, um, I really look at it as my team and, you know, it's really me and John and our help and our help is really just, I mean, I can't say enough about the guys that work for us. They're, they're outstanding. You know, I don't know anybody else at Penn national that has guys that show up at three o'clock in the morning when they're not told to, but it's because it's just what they do. So, you know, I can't say enough about the people that work for us. They're phenomenal. Um, so I don't really know it so much about being female. It's just, it's just what we do. And it really is an us thing. It really doesn't have anything to do with me being female. I don't know if that's a good answer, but it's, no, it's how I perfect. feel. I want to stem mm. off of that female question in a sense and ask being a female having the love for the horse and like you said about the claiming uh, you know claiming being so tough and being in bed and crying how do you because you know we're known to be more emotional creatures women how do you separate that when you fall in love with them and you know it's and, and then you're a part of this business too i don't know if i do separate it um i s- <laughs> I think one day, I, one day when I don't do this anymore, I'm going to like really cry. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't, 
I don't know. It's really hard. So um, I think sometimes when I retire a horse that I know isn't going to run anymore, you know, and even if they're not going to stay with me, I just have a really good, and this may make sense to you because you do this a little bit yourself. Um, you just, you have a really good feeling and you just say, okay, like I just really did my part for this one. You know, you can't do it for all of them, but you did it for this one. Um, and you do it for this one over and over again. Um, and that's all you can do. And I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the best you can do. You do the best you can do for each one. And even while they're racing, you do the right thing for the ones you have running. You keep doing the right thing for the ones you have run. Um, you know, and, and if it means time off, if it means surgery, if it, you know, whatever it means, you keep doing the right thing, you know? And I, I mean, I said it to an owner, a big owner of mine, who's very light on horses in training right now, um, last week. And I said, you know, all we can do is keep doing the right thing for what we have right now. We keep doing the right thing and it'll keep coming back because that's all that. you can do. You keep doing the right thing. Um, yeah, and I think it comes back to you. I really, I believe that in my heart that it keeps coming back if you just keep doing the right thing. Well, you've got someone in agreement here. Let's see. Lane Schaefer said, I don't separate it either, Aaron. It's okay. <laughs> well, I love So <laughs> I'm glad she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got Dominic Fama. Ha having Tyler in your corner helps a lot. So let's see. Let's talk a little bit about Penn and the weather. Jamie, our other host, um, she's in Tampa, and she's always bringing the Florida sunshine to light. So let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the reality of uh, mid Atlantic horse racing in the winter and how do you work your training program around our up and down weather? Hmm. Well, honestly, it goes pretty good. <laughs> like I, I honestly, it goes pretty good. Like we have um, we have some days here and there. Gallop. Uh, is when black are you still there? Yeah, there? Stay there. Um, yeah, we hear you. You know, which we jog horses instead of gallop anyway, some days. Are you there? Yeah. Um, but we do pretty good. The the guys at Penn National are phenomenal in the winter. Um we don't miss that many days. That's awesome. They do really good. Um, so it's, uh, and I hate it and I complain every day, <laughs> uh, but really it's okay. They, they oh, really yeah. do. Okay. That's awesome. So when it's snowing, they're clearing the track up there. there and... Yeah. Can you hear? They are like, it's, it's really not that. Yeah. It's really not that bad. Like we, 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 we manage it. Okay. Oh, awesome. 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 Well, my last question for the night, I'm going to take it light. What is your favorite horse racing movie of all time? Horse racing movie? Yes. Um, is that, was that your question? Horse racing movie? Yes. Favorite horse racing movie of there? all time. Uh -oh. Horse uh -oh. racing movie. It was movie, right? Yes. Yes. Oh no. I think we lost her officially. Did we? It's frozen. <clears throat> Come back, Aaron. <laughs> All right, I texted her. Um, I already had it, you know, saved from the last time. I thought I had to send it to her. So I just yeah. sent it to her now and go out and come back. And in. I know she's cold out there. I know she's cold. Oh, yeah, it's, it's cold here. I'm only an hour away from her, so I know oh, yeah. it's cold. That's right. <laughs> close to me. I always, I don't know why I feel like you're so far away. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I think like four hours away from you. We've been to Charlestown one time. 
You have to come back in the summer. Yeah. Yes, cold. Did you text her, tell her to I I uh, did. You might have to you might have to kick her out of this one. You know how to do that? Yeah, I know. You officially kick somebody out for the first time. <laughs> what to do? Just put it here. Hold on. She didn't. She hasn't got. She has. She's still trying on this one. Hold on. Nope. All right. She's going to. She signed out. So she should be right back, guys. Wow. She's out there interviewing for us in the cold. Yeah. And and look, your first day. Look how quick 40 minutes goes when we have a guest on. That was absolutely a pleasure. Here to talk. she is. Here she is. Back over uh, here. Are you there? You're back. Yes. <laughs> the connection spotty. Okay. I think we got her. Are you there? Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah. My favorite horse okay. racing movie. Yeah. I can hear yes. you. Favorite horse okay. racing movie. Was that the question? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to be so cliche. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Secretary. Yeah. Secretary. I, I hate to be so cliche. No, that's but, a classic. But Secretary, it's my favorite racehorse of all time. Oh, I hate I to be cliche like everybody else, but well, I mean that's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I gotta I gotta go after that question. Do you ever actually yeah. go home after being at the horse track and actually put a horse racing movie on? I feel like that'd be the last thing you would want to do. I haven't. Do you know what I do? Do you know what we do? As the what couple, we watch re we we watch replays in bed. That's so romantic, right? <laughs> That's what we do. So yeah. I was going to ask that question, but I know there's after family and after horses, there's probably not probably not much time. But what we else see. do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what else would we do? We watch replays in that good, bad, the ugly. That's what we do. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so, Aaron, do you ship? Do you have any plans? I mean, are you planning to stay pin based? Do you have any plans to take a string anywhere else or ship out anywhere? What are your um, plans for 2023? No. I don't know. I feel so funny. Okay, there I am. Um, right now, we're planning on standing, staying at Pia at Penn. We have um, we have so many PA breads, and it, it's just going really good for us. Um, so right now, our our plans are to stay at Penn. Um, I always say one day I just want to go somewhere else, but <laughs> um, it's just been really good for us at Penn National, and we have a lot of PA breads. I mean, out of say 30 horses right now probably 25 of them are pen breads um so it just really makes sense for us to stay at pen um but i you know i'm a dreamer and i'm always reaching so i'm not saying never say never um but right now we're um planning to stay at pen Okay, nice. And let's see, you have a comment from Grandma Horse Racing. The couple that replays together stays <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm with her. I hope oh, forever. Got, so let's let's see. You've got a comment. Oh, my husband jumped on. Andre, if you come to <laughs> Cross Town, I'll ride. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And then one more from Dominic Fama. Are you and Tyler related? That's your stepson, correct? He is my stepson. Yes. Okay. All right, Sean. Well, do you have anything else for Miss Aaron tonight? Well, I asked one more question. You said about staying at Penn with the announcement of them going to seven races a day and cutting back 10%. How hard is that? Um, how hard is that? I think it would be okay. I hope in 2024 we can bring it back to eight. Okay. Hold on. I have I have one more question here from the bomb one. My favorite horse that you train is Bess. She hasn't raced since the summer. Will she be coming back soon? I no. plan on entering her tomorrow. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How ironic that that just <laughs> popped in. That's awesome. And we just have a thank you coming in from Eli. Thank you, Aaron, for taking the time. And yes, I want to thank you. I just want you to know, coming from a, a woman, that I you're an inspiration. And um, wow, 
I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful I got to interview you. My first interview with horse racing today and horse center. Thank so you. you are one of the good ones and you know, more, more horsemen should strive to use the motto you do. And that's put the horse first. You know, I love yeah. that. I love that very, very much. So thank you so thank much you. For, for sharing Absolutely. everything with us tonight. Thank and the so cold, much. because I think you're outside this whole interview, ma'am, and I know it's cold up there. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Sean, you got anything else? No, that's it. I, I met Aaron on uh, Penn Mile Day. I appreciate it, and hopefully I get up to Penn next year, probably when it's a little bit warmer, and uh, hopefully. I'll meet her again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and we hope to have you back on, Aaron, in the future. Good luck in 2023, and we'll be watching. Thank you. Thank All you right. so have much, guys. Time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Aaron. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. All right. Wow. She was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. What? Yeah, I, I met... I met her on Penn Mile Day. You know, I, I've known about her. Obviously, I've talked to Tyler for a while. Uh, I never really got to talk to Aaron. I met her on Penn Mile Day. Really nice. Um, of course, it was. she was going to the winner circle as I got to meet her. So, of course, she That's was great. really happy, too. <laughs> but uh, really nice in person, too. So you know, I, just, wanna, I, wanna... Love, I love that her heart for it. I mean, I love that, you know, she – I love to hear her story about how – she started as, you know, a, a mom and struggling to balance and how she got into it. But then just to hear her, what, she's got 379 lifetime wins, what, 2,035 career starts. And to still stand there and say, the horse comes first. I feel like that's a great way to end the night. And I feel like everybody should take note of that. The horse comes first. And I feel like if everybody goes by that motto, we'll be around a lot longer talking about horse racing. Yeah, absolutely. And who who wouldn't be happy with, like I said, 19% winning percentage and 49% in the money. Yeah. Um, and, and you're you're protecting your horses too. That's and doing it and like exactly. she's doing the right thing. Yeah. Do the uh, yeah, right that, thing. It, it, it does come back. I'm a big believer in myself. What you put out comes back. And you can see that she's truly happy doing what she is doing. And I think that's because she says she's doing it the right way. She's putting the horses first. So. Yeah, absolutely. She just has to you know the hard part of the game and most people don't see it most people think it's just a business but we touched on it and you could tell with her love of the horses that the claiming game as much it is a necessity it's it's a hard hard on the horsemen to experience all that yeah and i like i like that she was very real and saying there's nights i cry in bed about it you know it's not easy you know and she and 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 i think my 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 most important question for myself for her tonight was how does she separate you know the emotion and and just hearing i she doesn't because I've been trying, I think I was looking for some advice, you know, how, how can I separate the emotion <laughs> from, from the ones that I take in and help, but, and you just can't, you know, you just do the best you can, like, like she said. So I love that. Well, this was awesome. I'm so excited to be here. I'm, I'm lot less nervous now, Sean. So you, you did great. Uh, <laughs> you did great. You, you knew your way around the computer right away too. So uh, it was a good okay, first show and we'll just get, We'll just get better from here. I told Rich he's a hundred percent at training people. So well, he was he was and I was nervous, but he did. He was, he was great, and I'm grateful to be here. And I'm just you know thanks for bringing me on, and I'm so excited for the new year and everything we have coming. I have one okay. comment. Great show, Julie did an awesome first show, and happy birthday to Blake. Yes, my uh, four year old will be five on Thursday. So oh, thanks, happy birthday, Blake. All right. Well, and, and then uh, tomorrow we'll we'll go on uh, tomorrow. First off, Rich and Terry will be back with uh, Parks at eleven thirty a.m. Eastern because Parks starts at eleven fifty-five tomorrow. And then tomorrow night we'll be back with another female trainer, Alexis Clarier. Um, yeah. she's she's one. She's up and coming too. She's been around, but she's really getting good. Um, and yeah, she's, she's another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Wednesday we got something different. We've never had this. Two Outriders brothers, uh, Willie and Kobe Laverne. So excited to interview them. So excited yeah, they're very, to their perspective. Very, po very popular in the business, but uh, they don't get many interviews like this. And we'd love to hear this. I mean, it's a total different perspective we're going to get. So. And, and what a good one I think we're going to get from both of them. They're amazing at what they do. So, And they've got some really cool ponies, so I can't wait to ask them all the questions. Well, cool. All right. Well, I will see you guys back here tomorrow at 8 p.m. 
and we will do it all again with a new special guest. And yet you got to do the you got to team me up with the winner circle thing. Oh yeah, hold on. <laughs> Go ahead, you do it. <laughs> See you in the winner. See you in the winner circle. <laughs> See you in the, no, no, hold on. Like Jamie did, didn't she say we've officially gone wire to wire? And there you go. See you in the winner's circle. There you okay. go. <laughs>